Back again with another Bond review, and today we're going to talk about Octopussy, which is definitely a interesting name for a Bond movie. <laughs> but uh, this one here, I felt at best it was a time waster. It was, and maybe it's one of these things, you know, watching it for the first time. Maybe if I revisit it down the road, I could warm up to it a little bit more. It's just compared to For Your Eyes Only, it doesn't have the excitement of that movie you know where for your eyes only it kept me more involved and more invested from start to end because i love the action uh i mean the film opens up where you have bond you know finally disposing of blowfield and then you get into the film you got some good action on the ski slopes uh, a couple of good fight scenes you know some good submersible action underwater a fun third act uh, good Bond girls, uh, Cara Bouquet's character of Melina. Uh, again, you know, that one kept me more involved and I felt had more excitement, more adventure. Uh, this one here just felt like, again, a step down. Uh, it, it, I can't put my finger on it. I know, I didn't even mention in my review of that, uh, the director, John Glenn, who would go on to direct... Uh, he directed Fear Eyes Only, he directed this movie, and he directed A View to a Kill, and the Timothy Dalton Bond movies, so, uh, but yeah, I mean, again, maybe it's one of these movies that, you know, if I revisit it sometime down the road again, I could maybe warm up to a little bit more, but basically the plot real quick, you have Bond, he's investigating uh, the murder of a fellow agent who was clutching a a uh, priceless Fabergé egg at the time of his death and the trail leads Bond to the mysterious octopusy. His traveling circus features a company of very luscious and athletic women. You see in the movie they have their own little, if you want to say, cult island of women. So Bond and Octopussy, they share a passionate affection uh, but soon uh, Bond discovers that the elegant uh, Kamal Khan is working with a mad Russian general to blow up uh, an atomic bomb on a U.S. Air Force base. And as Bond tries to stop uh, the nightmarish scheme, his exploits, uh, you know, takes him through the streets of India. And you have some bits towards the end of the film. Uh, you have this deadly brawl on top of a speeding train and so on and so forth and that's kind of the plot here in a nutshell but you know like i said i i think with this one it just it felt you know for your eyes only it was this you know they had to scale back because of moonraker you know being as big as it was they're like okay you know we've taken bond to space so we can't top that you know we have to bring it back to earth a little bit and get back to the essence of the franchise. And I thought for what that film did, for your eyes only, again, the action, between the action, the Bond girls, uh, the thrills, adventure, I thought it did a lot of things right. And it's become my favorite Roger Moore Bond movie. Uh, the Spy Who Loved Me Again is his best. I would say for your eyes only is my favorite. Uh, and this one, it just felt like it took another... You know, two steps down because, I don't know, I can't put my finger on it. I know with this movie, they weren't sure if Roger Moore was going to come back. So they even tested James Brolin for uh, the role of Bond. And there's uh, test footage on the documentary, which is interesting. But uh, they got Roger Moore back because the same year you would have Never Say Never Again, the unofficial Bond film, uh, which I still have to watch. Um I have a feeling I'll like that a little bit more. Uh, just a hunch. Uh, but Roger Moore, he's not bad here. Uh, he holds the film together for me, but it's like if you didn't have Roger Moore, it kind of feels like it wouldn't be as good. Or I mean, I know I understand Roger Moore was getting old at this time. I mean, this came out, what, 83? So he had to been in his mid-50s. And from what I understand, he was, you know, right near 60 when he did A View to a Kill. And I could be wrong about that. Um, 
So he was definitely getting up there in age. And again, it's, I mean, plot wise, it's maybe it's because, you know, Bond, you know, being in India, which I've never been to India. I'm sure it's a lovely place, but I don't know if it made for a uh, interesting location or, you know, really kept me engaged. And I know there's people out there that like this movie, you know, it gets a 6.6 .6 on IMDb, so, you know, you know, maybe I'm alone in my thinking here, but, you know, it's just, again, I, I keep comparing it to For Your Eyes Only and, you know, all the stuff that it offered action-wise, you know, adventure-wise, uh, and it's like here, you know, we're taking a step down because, I don't know, if it's, is it because, you know, they weren't sure Roger Moore was going to come back? Um, which, again, he's fine here, but is it one of those things that because they weren't sure Roger Moore was going to come back, it it just kind of seemed that way in the film? Uh, that, again, if you didn't have Roger Moore, you know, how good would it could have been or would be? But as far as, you know, as far as the rest of the cast here, let me pull up the cast real quick. I had the cast up. Um... Actually, let me do this. Uh, I mean, the film was a big hit, another big hit. You know, a budget around $28 million and made about $188 million, so it was still a big hit for the franchise. Um, now you have the character of Octopussy played by Maude Adams. And Maude Adams actually appeared in The Man with the Golden Gun, so they brought it back here. And she's not bad acting-wise. Uh, again, not bad to look at either. So <laughs> uh, you also have Kamal Khan in the film, this character. And, you know, he was there at most. I mean, not too memorable of a villain for me, uh, but he was there. You have another girl in the movie, this character, Magda, uh, Christina Wayborn, and I don't know if she, there wasn't a whole lot to her character. You do have Stephen Burkhoff in the film from First Blood Part 2 as the evil uh, general, and he wasn't bad. I wish he was more of the primary villain. Uh, you know, if I, if I think about it more, I mean, he has some good scenes. Uh, especially on the train. So, like I said, you have Stephen Burkhoff in the film, and again, he's he's fine. I like Stephen Burkhoff. Then you have this other sort of muscle, you know, henchman uh, uh, played by Kabir Betty. Uh, this character, Go Gobinda, and you know, he was fine. I mean, again, I like Roger Moore. He holds the film together for me. Uh, Mod Adams isn't bad, but I mean, if you look at the rest of the cast, again, the villains were okay. Uh, you have Q in here a little bit. Uh, so, again, wasn't bad at all. I mean, overall. Um, you know, the action to me, I mean, it just it felt not as big this time around. Uh, even the action feels a little scaled back. Um, I do like some of the bits in town where you have a cabbie chase, like you have a sort of a, a scene where Bond is in a taxi and they're, they're being pursued, and you get a little like a little str uh, fight street, like a, a fight street. I got that backwards. A little street fight, and Bond pulls a sword out of the guy's mouth and stuff like that. I like that. And then even before that, you know, the pre-title scene, you know, with the that little plane. And that was fun because, you know, he stops at a gas station. He's like, fill her up. I like that bit. I like some of the bits on the train. Um, you know, later on, this is kind of gearing towards the climax of the movie. You know, some fun bits on the train. Uh, and there's a little scene where he's being pursued through the jungle, if you will. You have people on elephants and they're going after Bond. And I shit you not. There's a scene where 007 
is swinging on these vines and you hear the Tarzan yell, which of course it's not Roger Moore, but you know, the fact they had, uh, the fact they had 007 do the Tarzan yell and, and it's kind of the first of these other scenes that would come up in the movie that were kind of a little bit on the uh, laughable side. You know, the Tarzan yell, then you would have this one bit where Bond is in disguise as an alligator. Like you would see this alligator in the river and the mouth would open up like that and you see Bond. You have Bond dressed in a gorilla outfit. You have gorilla costume. You have Bond dressed up as a clown in this movie. And it's like, you know, I don't know if that was really needed, to be honest with you. I just didn't really care for those moments in the movie. But I did like, you know, the final, you know, uh, the climax to the end where Bond's on the plane and gets into a little fight and then pulls back the antenna. I like that. And, you know, uh, kills our villain here. So, you know, when the action does happen, I mean, the film, the, the thing is with this movie, it's about, I think, two hours and ten minutes. And to me, I felt it at times. I didn't feel that, like, for your eyes only, I don't know how long that movie was. I want to say, let's see here. Yeah, two hours and seven minutes. So, for your eyes only was two hours and seven minutes. And this one here was... Yeah, two hours and 11, so maybe a few minutes longer. But for some reason, you know, I felt that here a little bit more. I don't know if it just, the film needed more, it needed to beef up the action a little bit more. It just felt like at times, you know, of course, you know, with these movies, you would have, you know, your moments of exposition. And that's fine, but, you know, also I think, with those moments, it's like, okay, you know, let's hurry it up a little bit here. And again, maybe, you know, it could have, uh, again, there's some decent action bits. I just think that maybe they could have beefed up on that a little bit more. And again, maybe India is not the most interesting location. And I haven't been to India. It's nothing against India. Uh, I would like to visit India, but... I don't know if it really engaged me, like, as a location, as an environment for Bond. I don't know if it really grabbed me as much. And, you know, you throw in the little silly moments of, you know, 007 doing the Tarzan yell and uh, disguising <laughs> as an alligator. And then later on, you know, Bond dressed up in a clown suit and, then, you know, running around in the circus. It's just those moments like that, I'm like, okay... I mean, you know, to me, it wasn't for me. It didn't make me laugh. And I'm trying to think what else to mention here. I mean, I can go through some bits of trivia here. I mean, in the moment where... Uh, I remember this one scene where they're having dinner, and, like, they're eating a sheep's head. And, yeah, the main villain here is eating part of a sheep's head and stuff like that. Um, I don't know, I mean, again, maybe it's just one of these things that, you know, at the moment, I don't know if I, I would say out of the, and I'm, the reason I'm pausing a lot, because I'm trying to, uh, I guess, kind of collect my thoughts a little bit, because this is not a rant, I don't want to, you know, give that impression that I hated this movie, but at the same time, uh, when I look at the era of Roger Moore, and I still have one more to go, uh, this is my least favorite so far. And again, maybe sometime down the road, it's one of these, if I revisit again, I could probably warm up to a little bit more. But I just felt, again, maybe I keep comparing it to, you know, Free Eyes Only, because the action in this movie is kind of, you know, a few far in between. Like, Okay, some cool, you know, some decent bits of action, but it's nothing spectacular or, you know, nothing that's, you know, nothing mind-blowing or exciting, you know, compared to For Your Eyes Only. But, 
Yeah, so I don't know what more I can say about this movie. It's, you know, it, Octopussy, at the end of the day, again, it was a time waster. Um, a couple of a couple of steps down from Furry Eyes Only, I felt that, you know, you, maybe this one could have added, which I think, I mean, when I look at the budgets, the budgets are the same. You know, for your eyes only in this movie, they're right at the same budget. And for some reason, again, I just felt like, I don't know, they maybe, it's like, okay, they had to scale back on for your eyes only, and this felt like, you know, even a little bit more scaled back. Like, just go for it, you know, beef it up a little bit, action-wise, what have you. So again, you know, a time waster. I don't hate the film, but, you know, again... It may require more viewing for me to warm up to. But that's my thoughts on Octopussy. Uh, so, yeah, I hope you like the review. If you like the film more, that's fine. I mean, I know, like I said, it gets a 6.6 .6 in IMDb. So, obviously, you know, I'm alone in regards to my uh, thinking, first impressions. Again, this is all first time watch for me. Uh, but, yeah, so that's my review of that. And next up will be Never Say Never Again. So stay tuned for that and have a good day.